Warning, this video contains spoilers from the Five Nights at Freddy's movie. If you haven't seen the movie yet, please avoid this video till you do. Thank you. What's up guys? It is the voice behind Frieza. And as I promised, I am doing a movie review of Five Nights at Freddy's. The movie that I went to go see. And let's just start by saying the movie was fire. This is a movie I would definitely recommend going seeing this if you're I would definitely recommend going to see this if you are a huge Five Nights at Freddy's fan and uh I enjoyed it really I I enjoyed it personally really good. This movie is really good uh with um story-wise uh it it keeps to the main story of Five Nights at Freddy's, you know, from the games and everything else. Um and um let's just discuss of the prawns and or well no the pros and the uh negative stuff so the pros um uh cast was great the animatronic uses were good um the scene the um the lighting and everything else was good um the uh, character use was really good, honestly. I mean, there were really the characters that you were expecting. Like, you know, you got Mike uh, Schmidt from the first game. You had one character who was Abby. I don't really necessarily know where Abby came into. Abby Schmidt, that's Michael's uh, sister. Um, And then you had, of course, you had William Afton. You had Vanessa, who is from Security Breach. Uh, Vanessa Afton so that was I mean I you know uh, you know I think that's who that is you know Vanessa from Security Breach is who I assume that it is because her name is Vanessa uh, you got Freddy you got Bonnie Chica Fred uh, Fatsy and uh, other than that it was really good and now for the negatives negatives was when I went to go see this movie I was expecting to sit there for three hours and watch the Five Nights at Freddy's movie for three hours. But um, honestly, the, fa the Five Nights at Freddy's movie was rumored to be three hours, but actually it is close to at least uh, an hour or no, t it, it's close to two hours long. It's like one hour and maybe 58 minutes. And so, you know, when I was watching it, um, I was like a little bit confused because at one point they were uh just you no know, I was watching it and you know it was like this is a movie supposed to be three hours right I mean so why does it almost feel like the movie's almost over and you know maybe I was just saying to myself maybe I've just been sitting here for a long time and three hours has literally gone like by just like that but no uh when me and my uh, uh brother-in-law went to go watch it and then got out of the theater uh he said that wasn't three hours and I was like really it wasn't? And he said, yeah, that wasn't three hours. I'm like, wow. And that kind of disappointed me. Because, like, you know, I bought tickets to go see a three-hour movie. And, you know, I got a little rejected uh, because I was expecting to sit there for three hours and watch a movie that I was waiting to see for a very long time. But, no, I went and watched an hour and 58-something-minute movie. And, I mean, don't get me wrong. There were some scenes in the movie that were really good. Like, um, like, uh, when Mike first sees the animatronics and, um, uh, you know, sees that they're alive and, you know, moving by themselves, that was really freaking good and a good scene. And then also it's like, you know, the part where like, you know, you also see the children that are being, that are possessing the animatronics, that part is like, uh, like really unexpected. Because, like, I didn't expect them to show the children who are possessing the animatronics. I was expecting to just see the animatronics and, you know, see them, you know, you know, kill a couple people and, you know, jump scared and stuff like that. But no, they actually showed the possessed children. I was like, oh my god, those are the children that are possessing the animatronics. And, you know, you kind of notice it at first because, like, uh, in this, like, little dreamscape that Mike is having, he sees the possessed children 
And at one point, one of the children like kind of slice him with their hand and he starts bleeding. And at that point, you hear like a hook sound. And then you realize when you hear a hook sound that that's Foxy. That's the children. That's the child who is possessing Foxy. And that just like really, really uh, like made my jaw drop. And there was like one other scene where uh, one girl got freaking decapitated. And it, and that was the one that was. But overall, this movie really isn't that scary. Like there's not really that many like, you know, scare scenes or, you know, um, you know, uh, jump scares and stuff like that. That there isn't that many jump scares in this movie, and you know you go into this movie, you know it's a horror movie, and you know expecting like a whole lot of scares, but there honestly really isn't that many scares, and that's maybe another thing that disappointed me because I was expecting to get a whole you know a lot of scares and everything, but other than that, it there wasn't that many scares, and that's the one part that kind of uh, I guess. I don't know. I mean, overall, the movie was really good. In retrospect, it was really, really good. But everything else, uh, what again, like, you know, going to the movie, expecting it to be three hours and sitting there three hours, you know, watching this mo the movie that you've been wanting to see for a long time. Um, um, what was the other thing? Oh, yeah. Um, just seeing William Afton. By the way, the actor who they got to play William Afton was a really, really nice choice. If you guys have not seen um, the live action Scooby Doo movies, they got the actor who played Shaggy to play William Afton. And I thought that was a really, really good choice. Like, they made a really good choice by that. And the funny thing about it is now that I, now if I ever go back and watch the live action Scooby Doo movies, I'm going to be like, oh, it's William Afton. <laughs> but no, nah, other than that, this movie was really, really good. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, hold on, let me um, see right now if I'm, hold on, let me look it up right now and then I will tell you guys. Well, that's wrong because that's not what somebody told me. It's got a 30% chance of Rotten Tomatoes, which I'm now being told that that's a good thing. And, um... Uh, this movie is, my mistake, one hour and 49 minutes, close to two hours. But um, other than that, going to go see this movie and like finally knowing that we have an actual real Five Nights at Freddy's movie and not a fan-made Five Nights at Freddy's movie. Because I know there's been a lot of fan-made uh, Five Nights at Freddy's movies uh, from the ones that I've seen. And from the ones that I've seen were really, really good, but they just didn't capture that they just didn't have that one thing that was missing. And that one thing that was missing was just like, um, or, you know, that like they, they, the, the FNAF, the Final Freddy's fan made movies were all like animated, but this one was real. This one was actually right. Like real life. And the, the way that the, the crew and Scott Cawthon and everybody else, um, the way that like they used and did a little bit. You need to guys. You guys need to know. If you didn't know, the the animatronics, those are actual animatronics. Those are not people in. Well, I say that sometimes. Sometimes there were people. They they were people in suits. But sometimes they were actual real animatronics. They used real animatronics in the movie. Those weren't fake animatronics. Those are real, real, real animatronics that they used. And I just, I just found that amazing. Cause like, or a little bit, no, what's the word? It, it just made it more terrifying to know that, that, you know, they actually used real animatronics for a Five Nights at Freddy's movie. And I just found that really, really epic. But, um, yeah, I think that's going to do it for the movie review. I don't really have anything else to say other than go watch this movie. If you haven't already, go watch this movie. It's really good. It's I had to give it a percentage of like scare wise. I would probably get it give it like a 45% and a rating uh 1 out of 10. I would give it a 7 out of 10. Because there were some scenes that were reused and it kind of just got really annoying to see the same scene over and over and over again. But other than that, that's the end of my Five Nights at Freddy's review movie review. I hope you guys and I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you agree with my rating and you have seen the movie, let me know in the comments how you guys enjoyed it. Let me know 
you, what you would rate the fina- the finance of Freddy's movie at from a one to a ten. And um, hopefully, if this movie gets more good ratings, maybe in the future we'll see a finance of Freddy's two. I'm hoping for that. Honestly, I'm hoping for a Finance Freddy's two. That would be really dope if we got a Finance Freddy's two movie. Uh, but other than that, this is the voice behind Frieza signing off. Until next time, guys. Uh, I will see you guys on the Frieza Force Friday stream. And um, yeah, peace. Nate Goyard. Stay with me, little bitch, yeah, you know that I'm